In this video, we are going to talk about how you, with one simple click, can add subtitles inside of the Rinse Resolve Studio. Now, this is a feature that is included in the Studio version, so you can do it in the free one. In that case, you would have to do it manually. So this is one of the features that I use on a daily basis almost when we do interviews and I do short form content. It's such an easy way to add subtitles, whereas before with the free version, I had to do it manually. That's kind of tedious. And then if it if you want to have to do it an easier way, you have to export it and do it in another software or something and then export it again and then it's ready. So for me, this is a lot easier to do, especially for those longer form videos with interviews and stuff where I really want those subtitles on it. So I'm going to show you how you easily do it inside the Resolve. Inside here, we have this shot that I just did outside to kind of show you what we're talking about. So I pretended to be in an interview and this is what it sounds like. This is how you can super easily put on subtitles with just one click. Now there is a little bit of drawback and that is that it doesn't always recognize the words perfectly. For example, if you say video lots, usually it gets a lot wrong because it thinks it's a different kind of word, but that's easily fixed and we'll look at how you do that now. So that's the simple clip that we did. Now with just a few clicks, we can add the subtitles. So how you do that is you head into timeline up here and you go down to create subtitles from audio. When we click on that, we'll get a box up here, and then we have a few different options. Now for the language, I usually choose English because that's what I do for my videos, but we've also used it in Dutch, and that worked really great as well. Now, no matter what you select, you often have to do a little bit of adjustment afterwards. That's just the thing to know, but it gets you a lot further than if you try to do it manually, or even if you had to export, I still think this is faster than using it in other tools. So I usually go with English, at least for this, because I'm speaking English in the video. For the caption preset, I'm going with default. That's what I always use. For the maximum length of characters, I'm going to try and go for something like uh, 70 because it's a horizontal video. And then I'm going to do lines, I'm going to do double. Then I'll have a little bit more text on the lines rather than having it shortened down and switching all the time. So by that, we just click create and then let DaVinci do its magic. It's a short clip, so it should be fast. And here we go. So the first thing you'll notice is that there are some gaps, but if we try and play it through, let's see how it works. This is how you can super easily put on subtitles with just one click. Now there is a little bit of drawback, and that is that it doesn't always recognize the words perfectly. For example, if you say video lots, usually it gets a lot wrong because it thinks it's a different kind of word, but that's easily fixed, and we'll look at how you do that now. So exactly as I expected with this video and why I did this test is that it gets the word lots wrong because we're not looking for the word lot as in a lot. We're looking for the word lots as in video lots and a lookup table. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drag out the text boxes here the subtitle text so that it fill up the entire frame because I like that it just switches between the subtitles and not have gaps in between them. That's a per personal preference thing. Um, the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on it and I'm going to go to track. I'm going to change the font. I usually use Puppins. That's just my personal preference. And then in medium and I'm going to adjust the size to maybe 40. I think that's a little bit more suitable for our clip here. And now it's a little bit far up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag it down a little bit to around maybe 320 or something like this. That looks a little bit better down here. And then I'm going to add a background. Now you can see we have a little bit of a square outside of our words here that just makes the subtitle stand out a little bit more. And for that, I think we're pretty set. Now to adjust where it gets it wrong, I'm just going to click on that section here. I'm going to go back to caption up here in the expector menu and I'm just going to adjust the text very easily in here. Now, it's not a lot that it gets wrong, no pun intended, but it is just super simple to change that. And with a few clicks and adjustments, we have this now. This is how you can super easily put on subtitles with just one click. Now, there is a little bit of drawback, and that is that it doesn't always recognize the words perfectly. For example, if you say video lots, Usually it gets a lot wrong because it thinks it's a different kind of word, but that's easily fixed and we'll look at how you do that now. So now we have perfect subtitles with just a few clicks and it didn't take much time to add them in. Now this was a horizontal video and that's often used if you do any kind of project where you need an interview or something like that, then that's very useful. But if you do it for short form content, we can also look at how you do that. So let me in here switch to my vertical timeline where I've just put in the same clip. 
let's do the exact same thing. So I'm going to a timeline menu up here. I'm going to create subtitles from audio. Now we still have the settings from before. So I'm still going to go with English and default uh, subtitle default, but I'm going to change the characters per line to around 35. And then instead of double lines, I want single lines. Now I'm going to say create and it's analyze. And here we go. Now, again, we have some gaps. So I'm just going to start by stretching them out a little bit so we don't have any of those. And then the first thing I see is that the text is way too big. So I'm going to click on one of the text here and go to track. And then I'm going to change the font and go to medium here. And for the size, let's go to something like 30. That should work. And for the background, we add that here. And that's a good start. So let's see how that looks. This is how you can super easily put on subtitles with just one click. Now there is a little bit of drawback and that is that it doesn't always recognize the words perfectly. For example, if you say video LUTs, usually it gets a lot wrong because it thinks it's a different kind of word, but that's easily fixed and we'll look at how you do that now. So as you can see, there are two small things that I want to adjust here. Again, we have the word that we want to change. That's the same as before. But I also notice that it's breaking up the text a little bit funny here. And that's because we said around 35 characters per line and that's the maximum. So that cuts it off here. But that doesn't really make sense when we have a uh, quotation marks here. So let's put in lots here instead and it still fits within our text frame. So that's lucky. And then go to the next one here and then delete the first part of the text like this and change the text here. So it is doing it correctly to lot. And the only thing we need to change now is where this subtitle part cuts. Video lots, usually, because I say usually here, so we can just drag the break between here. And now it should be perfectly aligned again. So let's see how it looks. This is how you can super easily put on subtitles with just one click. Now there is a little bit of drawback and that is that it doesn't always recognize the words perfectly. For example, if you say video lots, usually it gets a lot wrong because it thinks it's a different kind of word, but that's easily fixed and we'll look at how you do that now. So with that, we very easily have subtitles on our text and we can move them around and we can do funky things to them if you want. For the example with this, the only other thing I would change is that it would raise the text up a little bit if it's for social media, because you usually have a lot of information in the bottom. So to make sure you can read the subtitles, I would move them up a little bit, but you can do that. And when you do it in the track, it'll make it uh, for all of them. So you don't have to adjust it on an individual basis, which makes it super easy. So that was what I wanted to show you today. Again, it's a feature in DaVinci Resolve Studio. So if you are still on the free version, uh, it is a little bit more tedious and you might have to use third party programs if you still want to do it automatically. But if you decide to upgrade to the studio version at any point, this is a super nice feature that I use a lot and I really enjoy that I can do it natively inside of the Rinse Resolve rather than having to export it and do it in a third party software and then export again and before I can upload. Especially when I have longer projects that are one minute or longer, that just makes it easier and keeps the size smaller that I don't have to export it multiple times. So if you have any questions to how this works or anything else in DaVinci Resolve Studio, leave a comment down below and I'm always happy to help. And with that said, I'll leave you here and until the next time, take care.